Beloved, welcome back to the channel. Today, we have something very special. We're going to show you and me from our in-house radio expert, Mr. Evan, how to put together the Super Skookum Pro tactical operator kit if you've got a Bofang radio or anything, basically any radio. Now, this was when I first started doing this, goodness, the learning curve was tremendous. And I, when I went to look at buying stuff, it was one, it was expensive and I was concerned I was going to buy the wrong stuff. It wasn't going to be compatible. I have asked Evan if he would walk us through here. We're going to actually build one up from the radio you already have and do it properly. If you were to have this rig and show up at a rifle class, you would not look like a fool. Yeah, that's yeah, true. Yeah, it's going to be done right. So we're going to, we'll just get started. I'll come in and Evan will start building and we'll start with the radio pack and see where this takes us. The whole system is going to start with a, a radio pouch. Right. Now, uh, we talked about the philosophy on this. Where should it go on your mount? I've seen a lot of guys doing it. You were telling me non-dominant side. You want to right. have it over here so that you can have a rifle in your right hand. If you're left-handed, of course, it'll sw switch. Now we have the ability to still hold the rifle and adjust volume, squelch, channel. Right. So we're going to mount it here on the cummerbund. And you're making adjustments here, but you're also going to have all of this bulk added so you don't worry about hitting it with your rifle when you're presenting. You keep all the calm stuff on the opposite That's side right. of the rifle. So this is a SOE extended battery. A radio pouch, this is what's gonna come with your Proho kit or as an add-on radio will go in here. And this is PALS or Molly webbing um, that's spaced to match your standard plate this carrier chest This is standard rig. with all the plate That's carriers. right. So can you show us how to leave these clips? Because I know I've put them on several times. Guys in the comments tell me I've got them on backwards. Right. What's the proper way? Right, so what you wanna do, these are the lightweight malice clips that are scalloped. These are the long ones. These are what you want. If you fold it over, you see that's the ultimate length. They're gonna fit those uh, five rows of PALS webbing perfectly, which is what our pouch is made for and what this is made for. And you're gonna start at the bottom. That's what's key is weave it up through what you're adding it to with the clip facing you, right? And we have mismatched colors, but you get the idea. And you're gonna go all the way through these. If you had five rows, you just go straight up through all five rows. You're not doing any weaving yet. That's where I ran into problems was trying to start weaving on the get-go. Right, and now you take what you're adding, flip it upside down, because it's gonna fold down, right? So you're gonna start at the top, and make note, you're gonna you're gonna to wanna to come back in here. So we're gonna go into, then come back out of the pouch, go behind, and then come back out onto the pouch to give it a nice um, secure fit. So, okay, so now once we got the radio pouch, whatever it is you decide on, um, let's go with the classic, uh, the, right, bow, so the bow if, thing. If you're running a bow thing, uh, this pouch is perfect for it. It's a little bit tall. So you have height adjustability, you can adjust that shock cord. The nice thing about the shock cord is, I, I've noticed, because we've been using this mount, is that you can uh, still access your buttons. Yep. You don't have a full flap on it, which is really nice. And your antenna comes straight up, so it's not, if it was a full flap, your antenna would be interfering. Okay, so the next part, which was the part, well, this and the Peltors, which was so confusing for me, was uh, that is gonna be the push to talk. Right. now. Your stuff, uh, you're specking out with, with what's called a Kenwood plug, correct? That's right. And the Kenwood plug is going to be a, a standard plug that's shared across many radios, and you'll know it because it has two pins, a large and a small. That's right. So on the bow fangs, right here, now this is where you could also plug in a remote mic. This is going to be, you call this the PTT or the push, that's right. to, push to talk? That's right. Tell me a little bit about this. Where are you getting this, and why are you, are you recommending this one? So these are American-made by a... Aries Communication out of Texas. He hand builds these um, and they're, they're an industry standard, right? This is for an amplified headset. So any military style. Um, we'll step back there. You're so big, <laughs> I get you in frame here. Peltor Comtac or um, Opscore Amps, MSA Sword and right? Anything with a boom mic that is military grade. What you wanna look out for is you don't want amplified if you're running the cheaper paintball grade stuff. Those are non-amplified. So that's the big dividing line. If you paid $500 or more, it's probably amplified. If you paid 150, it's probably non-amplified. You want you amplified. It. So this is has a, a clip on it that's designed to fit the, the webbing. Pals webbing. The Pals yep. webbing. 
And so you were saying that it's typical you want to put this on a, would you put it here or up here? Where would you recommend really, it? Really, that looks good to me. Your your key reason for it is you need to access it with that weak hand. So if a rifle in my hand, I can right. push this. And now this is basically what this is going to do, if you don't know, is that this is going to key your mic and your radio inside of your Peltor. Right. As if your, you were pressing this button. Same. It's a remote button. Right. And the reason why we want this is so we can have a closed, quiet system. That's if right. a team was operating, you don't want to have loud speakers coming off your radio. Of course. Obviously. Okay, so the push to talk, that defies a lot of mystery for me. Cable routing. I know a lot of the guys on YouTube are always going on and talking about this. What's the quick and dirty with cable routing? I mean, the main thing you want to look for is you want no ability to hang up, right? So you want to get this hidden. You know, if you've got Velcro and you can tuck all this out of the way and be certain that you will get no branches snagged, um, you can route this through PALS webbing. So if you go ahead and, you know, this will fit through PALS webbing to get down to where you're going. The main thing is you want low profile, slick, no exposed wires hanging to catch, out. To catch on stuff. Right. And so those of us who don't have the, the coin to have separate everything, sure. where you might want to use your radio for this or out, all we're doing now is we're probably unplugging an antenna, unplugging the Kenwood push to talk and now our radio comes right. out and we're back to an, our normal radio again. And this is going to be the same push to talk for the digital radio with the Kenwood plug or the bow thing and the pouch fits Got both it. radios. Okay, so with our radio, we plug in our push to talk with the Kenwood plug. We've got our radio pouch on the non-dominant side. What's our next step? What's, what are we gonna plug into this? So. Um, it looks like you've got Peltor Comtex. What you're looking for is this U174 plug. This is a, like a smushed guitar cable, right? Um, that's your industry standard down lead that's gonna plug directly into this U94 plug. It's a nice solid detent. The reason it has, well, it's so strong that it pulls out of that clip. So that huge ramp right there it has a nice ball detent in there that holds this tight. So it's going to have a firm click if you want to do it. To, I don't want to knock you over there. It's very strong. Yeah. That's going to remove the ability to accidentally pull it out. And then, of course, um, you're looking for any headset with a boom mic. Uh, these are Peltor Comtex, but you're going to have that same connection across all those models we talked about. Yeah, and also don't do what I did. I made a mistake when I ordered when I ordered these uh, the Peltors. Right. You know, I didn't have the money to go with all the system, but I wanted to in the future. I didn't know the difference, and I ended up buying a pair that didn't have that capability. How do I know the difference? So the key word you're looking for is defender. If they say defender, these are ear pro protection only. They defend your hearing, but they're not communication. You don't see a boom mic. Um, this is not going to be the comms com, capable. The comm tech in the name comm is for communications. Right. That's the giveaway. So if Defender you, versus comm tech. If you see Defender, that's a red flag that you're only going to have listen capability. Still excellent ear pro. They do make an input for this that you can listen to a phone or a radio, but they never have a boom mic. You're always looking for that boom mic that that's, comes that's across. Okay. So we're not going to get into the different mounting options. There's too too many, but whatever you decide on is going to plug in to this PTT. Now, why are these disconnect? Why why do you want to disconnect this? You want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah. So if you need to take your helmet off or you need to shed your carrier, um, this comes apart, right? So now you're not tied into one solid system. Everything can be uh, modular. Yeah. Well, that's actually pretty simple. I, that was always so confusing to me. There's only really uh, one piece that's going in between the radio and, right. and your Comtex, and that's that push to talk. And there are all sorts of uh, wearable headsets with that same plug. If you want something that's not for a helmet, you could get just an earpiece that plugs into the same interface. So this is the industry standard, that type of plug. This is the one you want? Yes. Okay, so let's, once we get that, that's everything we need for the connection to the Comtex. Um, now we've got some antenna options. Um, we've got three different antennas that Evan is recommending. Can you explain to me the differences and why? Yeah, so we would start with kind of your best option is going to be a wearable antenna. So these are available at RadioMadeEasy.com. Um, 
the trick with this is it's basically like a piece of paracord, right? It's completely flexible. There's no rigidity whatsoever. So this is gonna give you the best cable routing capability. You wanna go over, you'd like to keep it as straight as possible. I like to try to get a U shape over my shoulder. So I'm gonna follow the same routing pattern back over my back. And if I have a tail, try, try to, I can try zigzag to keep, it. keep it like this. What are the cons of this antenna? So this here? is not a finely tuned antenna for a specific frequency. This is just a general purpose antenna. It covers a really wide band. So you're not gonna get incredible range out of it. It's not highly efficient but its upside is it's purpose built to live on the plate carrier. So I don't, you know, you think about the reason you're using it, you can usually see the people you need to talk to. Range isn't the concern, but low profile is really the name gotcha. of the game, right? So that's the big difference with this one is this is gonna be a permanent mount to your plate carrier. Right. You're not gonna be you're never taking, it, taking off. it off, uh, but you're gonna sacrifice a little bit of range. Yep, with, and it's up this. against your body and that's never a great thing to have it um, obstructed, um, but you have that as an option. Of course, all our antennas are BNC connection, that quarter turn. And in this world, this is super important because imagine if you're using an SMA antenna to get this off, if this was mounted to you, you to get the radio, the radio off, around seven around turns you. on, seven turns off. So now um, if I go from handheld to here, it's a quick quarter yeah. turn on and off. That's the most powerful argument I've heard for that BNC connection right. is, is that convenience. So if you can if you can swing it and you're you're looking for the best plate carrier system, a wearable it would be my recommendation. But if if you're trying to make something more versatile work, we have some other options. So so this is the one that we just talked about in the three radio kit. Right. This is going to be an up armored version of our of the standard whip antenna. That's right. Um, it's going to be more durable. It's got strain relief on it. Yep. It's got a sheathing. This is might be a, a good compromise because this is going to be able you, to use this off the plate carrier as well as on it. And I don't think that this would be a terrible burden. I think you could weave this. No, and the main thing is you get all this abrasion resistance instead of just the regular heat shrink. So I could I could get it up through my shoulder if I wanted to, so it's not poking anything. Um, it's going into a pocket somehow. I don't know if that's a pass through. Oh, maybe. But you get the idea, this, could weave, this or... could weave over your shoulder just like the wearable. The difference is this has some rigidity, right? The wearable is completely flexible. So this would be a compromise. You got the abrasion resistance. It's not um, a, a bright color or anything. It works well as a compromise that now I can go take this off the plate carrier and use it as a handheld this, antenna. This is a multi-tool. Yep. Uh, it's gonna go dual roles. I think for, for me, this would probably be the more logical. I, I like the ability to pull this off here and not have to yeah. unweave an antenna or carry two antennas. Right, because otherwise you're gonna coil this up, stick it in your admin pouch, and then you can run with it when it comes That's off. That's a good point. Uh, there's a third option uh, as well, and we've been using these. We found that they don't have the range of the whips, right. but they're so convenient to have that stubby. Yep, so if, you're, if you need a quick, easy solution, a stubby antenna is gonna have comparable range to something like this, and you know, not as, not as easy to get in your way. It is more prone to getting hung up on a sling, but it's a good option as a quick and dirty solution, something you have on hand. So I'm not going to be whipping you in, in that's the right. face. And all these options are going to be identical on the DMR radio. Um, everything's still adapted to that same connector style. The pouch fits this radio. It's adjustable for any height. So uh, you'll be able to interchange so those. So if you have, or are going to order or already have a three radio kit, Every, the only thing you're gonna to need to add this is gonna be your Comtex yep. and this, this PTT. That's right. You've got the, the pouch and the radio, all that's, that's right. gonna play nice together. And all these are available at Radio Made Easy. Um, so if you wanna add them on, buy them a la carte, everything's available. Now, uh, just one last thing. Uh, if you, I ask uh, Evan, if you were gonna add an accessory to this or something to complement sure. the radio, especially with the bow things, uh, this armor piece. Can you talk right. about that and why a little bit? So this is uh, an exoskeleton. So if you are making a, if you're bowling on a budget, right, you have to make a bow fang work with, which to be clear, this is not um, the right tool for the job. But if you have to make it work, um, this will add some protection. So um, something I learned in my first rifle class with a bow fang is my sling 
turn the radio on. Every time I would present my rifle, it would ride this knob and click the radio on. So um, this prevents that, it protects that volume knob from accidental um, connections and it screws in through the belt clip on the rear of the radio. Oh, it yeah. also prevents uh, accidental presses of the push to talk. So, so you still have full access to, to right. everything. It's just more intentional access. And you don't have to alter the radio. You can Not at simply all. remove it or add that's it. Right. Yeah, that's a really good feature. We ran into that with these open yep. uh, ca cases as well. This looks like it's 3D printed. It's it's commercially 3D printed with nylon, really high quality. You're not going to see print lines. Um, and I, I run these. Uh, my battle test has been with yeah. my children, <laughs> and uh, they can't break them. But that's how we run. All our Baofings have those. It's an essential upgrade. You know, had I been running this on my radios, you I might have had I better luck. Have, uh, cracked Baofings. Yep. And this is, an up, this is their V2, so um, easier access to the buttons and a little improved yeah. Um, That's pretty pretty small uh, cheap insurance. Yeah, uh, to it protect is. those radios. So if you're stuck with the Baofeng or you got to make that work, absolutely need the exoskeleton to go with it. Okay, um, I guess that pretty much answers it. I mean, it seems so simple to me now. You know, now that I kind of understand it, but I know this was super confusing to me. Yep. Uh, Main I, thing I to keep in mind is if you're running military style ear pro, you need the amplified push to talk, not the non amplified. That was hard for me in the beginning too. I actually bought the wrong stuff the first time because I couldn't find a good answer. That's yeah. the least you need to know. Amplified PTT, military style ear pro, and then you get, you get everything else you need uh, with the kit. Uh, can I ask you one more bonus question? Sure. Um, you talked about balling on a budget. Is there a budget friendly option for guys that can't drop six, seven hundred dollars on Absolutely. a Comtex, what would you recommend? So my preferred low budget solution is don't even try to integrate it. Run a speaker mic, just a regular remote mic with an ear tube up to your ear. Run your ear pro over the top of that and you're golden, right? Run that, save your money for Comtex or OpsCore amps. Don't buy the paintball grade stuff, just save your money. Run that cheap solution underneath Howard Lights or Walker Razors, something yep. budget. That's going to work fine. With what you already have. And just run it underneath yeah. it. Can we uh, expect a video tutorial on how to put that kit together? Sure, sure. Yeah, I'd like to see that because I know this was a barrier. This is, this is a tough pill to swallow, especially yep. when you're getting into plates and all that. It really starts to add up. A night vision is a, and all of this stuff <laughs> is a, it's, yeah. uh, it's a lot of money. Go ahead and budget a grand for the comms connectivity. You know, from the radio up, you need about a thousand dollars. Yeah. If you're not ready to spend that, you can get a, a speaker mic and an ear tube for about 40 bucks and that'll get you by. Well, great. Well, I, I would like to see that and how that ear tube works. Yeah. That, that would be a good option okay. uh, using what you have. Well, that's good. I think that pretty much demystifies it. Good. Uh, really appreciate you walking through this, just knowing how to do the Alice clips. So that was something that I learned today. Yep. Uh, was it, I, I won't put it on backwards though. Yeah, you do it right. I'll do it wrong. <laughs> so um, stay tuned. Uh, next video is going to be really good. We're going to be, uh, or uh, Mr. Evan is going to be building a uh, portable man, uh, a super powerful uh, man pack. Man yep. packs. Thank you yep. very, very yep. much. And that's one the video that I'm really looking forward to making. So you're not going to want to miss that. And we're going to have that up shortly. So may God bless you and your families. Please keep us in your prayers. And we'll see you guys on the next video.